Whoa, welcome back everyone. How's it going? Good to see everyone this morning, afternoon, evening, wherever at in the world. Oh my goodness. Look at all these amazing people in the chat. So many people. Oh my goodness. What a great, what a great back comeback to everyone saying hello, being awesome, asking so many great questions. Oh my goodness. Ah, I'm James Montemagno. I'm a program manager over at Microsoft uh, by day, early mornings on Fridays on occasion, and on my spare nights and weekends. I'm here on YouTube's that is right, talking about all the things, C-sharp.net, and of course, on Maui and Xamarin. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, everyone. Spoiling me. Y'all are so nice to me. 130 people in the chat. Oh my goodness. 146. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is like the most ever. I'm super excited. It's been a while. It's been a hot second, if you will. That second was hot. It was on fire. It was like hot reloading nonstop. But I'm back now. Super excited. Uh at least for today. You know, at least for today for the stream. You know, I moved over to the YouTube so I could go and put some more quality content, quality content over on the YouTubes in my spare time, which I super love. And of course, still show up for some streaming. I really like it. I felt that this is sort of the right place. I feel like my life work side hustle balance has really uh, has really worked out. And yes, the hair is coming. Yes, tomorrow is my birthday. So thank you, mom, for being here. I appreciate that. Thanks all the birthday wishes in the chat. And thanks to all of our members of the channel. We'll be doing an exclusive member AMA next month. So be sure if you're interested in that and want to support the channel, I'll do this in my spare time for funds. You can go ahead and do that. You don't have to either. I, I have a full-time job, so you don't have to do anything. But it does help encourage uh, me to do more videos and you get some insight as well. So super awesome. Oh my goodness. So many questions, so many chats, so many things. I figured what I wanted to do today is not only just come back, but also um, answer a lot of questions in here as well. So super excited to have everyone back. Do a little AMA behind the scenes. Uh, uh, over here and I got a new camera. I don't know if I had this camera last time. I think I did. This is my uh, Canon M50. That was pretty cool. And uh, I got on Craigslist. I'm very excited about it. It's how I made my new uh, beginner videos and I made my new um, four hour workshop, which is crazy um, there. Uh, I like that people are liking the hair. The, the hair has been growing since COVID over two years. This is, well, this is not the beard. The beard is newer. The story behind the beard is that John Galloway on my team said that we've seen bearded James with short hair. We've seen long hair without a beard, but we never saw them together. So I said, okay, I'm gonna do that. I do need to get it trimmed. It's kind of it's kind of all over the place. You know, I tried to trim it this morning for y'all. It went and did the neck, it did the things, but you know, I did okay. Never did in there. Playback speed is too high here. Now, I don't know what that means. Shouldn't be. Adjust your YouTube? <laughs> um, hope it's okay. Let me know if anything's going on funky. I haven't updated my OBS in like two years. I'm like, I'm not doing it. I'm not touching anything. <laughs> Let me know. Let me know if the music's too loud as well. There we go. Oh, Justin, thanks for the subscription. Appreciate that. All right, cool. Yeah, it is a new style. And, you know, I got the light back here. There's a light I broke. I broke the um, the ability to change the color, so it's permanently .NET purple. So that's cool. Over there, we're good. Uh, I'm gonna go through the chat. I'm gonna answer some questions. I don't think I can highlight questions. Can I highlight questions? I can't highlight questions. I don't have that capability. Um, let's see what we got. Wow, so many nice people. Everyone's so nice. Uh, I'm gonna start at the bottom. Leandro asks. Leandro, right here. This one. This one here. How does it feel to work for Microsoft? It's one of my dreams to envy someone like me. I'm just a person. Um, Leandro, 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 Leandro. Leandro, how does it feel to work for Microsoft? It's one of my dreams and to be someone like me. Well, I aspire to be a person that hopefully creates some quality content that helps people learn some awesome stuff that I love and hopefully you love it too. Uh, so, how does it feel to work at Microsoft? Well, you know, I came over from Microsoft in the Xamarin acquisition six years ago. Oh my goodness. Emre, thank you for becoming a member. Oh my goodness. Thank you. You know, Code Monkey got a sweet badge. Gold Monkey. Amazing. Uh, I love Microsoft. I wear the shirts every day. It's literally my wardrobe. Uh, I love every bit and piece of it. I love the direction that we are as a company uh, to you know help um, every business and organization on the planet achieve more. 
And I think that inside of the developer division where my team sits, our community team, I get to continue my journey uh, of, of helping developers be successful learning .NET and ideally mobile and desktop apps with .NET. And um, I have an entire team that gets to do that. And that's super cool. Um, I love our culture that we've been building. I think we have a really great leadership team in place. Uh, I love that what we're doing in the developer space, you know, it's not just about windows. It's not just about .NET. It's about every single developer and helping them, um, you know, be the most productive developer on the planet. So whether you're using low code solutions, you know, pro code solutions, VS code, VS, GitHub, whatever you're using, you can kind of do anything you want. So I, I really love it. Um, it's, it's, it's a, it's a dream job. I, I definitely growing up really aspired to work at Microsoft one day. I went to the final PDC conference on campus before build, and they talked a lot about, um, um, it was Azure and Windows Phone at the time and uh, SQL Server and something like this. And I was just like, wow, this is so cool. Like, look at this campus. And it's so cool to work there uh, in general. And there's amazing jobs, careers.microsoft.com. My team's hiring. We're hiring a Visual Studio community manager. If you love Visual Studio and you're like, wow, I love Visual Studio. I want to tell people about Visual Studio. I want to make the releases of Visual Studio amazing. Careers.visualstudio.com. I have a job somewhere. I tweeted it out. Okay. What else is on? There's so many questions. I'm going to scroll to the top. Um, wow. So many things. You all are amazing. I love all of you so much. Thank you for being here. Bring tears to my eyes. Um, I think someone up here, I have a little, uh, how do I remove? I can't unpin that. I think up there, someone said, oh, they wanted a new video of what, what desktop technology to pick. I can do that in like a breakdown. That'd be cool. Um, Yusa asks, is there a signature pad? Someone was asking about a signature pad a little bit. Let me, let me show you. Um, what you can use is actually this drawing view. We'll drop this in the chat. You said, I don't know if I can, can I add you? No, I'll just drop this link in there. So there's a drawing view in the .NET Maui community toolkit, uh, which is super cool. You can, you can do that. Oh, Carlos, thanks for being a member. Appreciate that. Awesome. You are amazing. Uh, help support the channel. Super appreciate that y'all. Uh, and you get sweet new emotes. There's a bunch of emotes. Like you can do emotes like, you know, I made these custom ones. Like I paid someone on Fiverr to do the little Moochamon. Like all these little emotes. Oh my gosh, so cute. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, use the drawing view. There's a whole drawing view in the community toolkit. It's basically a signature pad. Bingo, bango. Uh, ba -ba -ba Another questions. Ooh, you know, I got this question a lot. I got it on Twitter, uh, the CPTI, but also just other people were asking me on Twitter. They've heard about Don and Maui. Maybe they're here for the first time. Maybe they're not here for the first time. And like, hey, how do I build these different applications for web as well? So, you know, what I want to tell people always is that there is something called Blazor Hybrid, okay, with Don and Maui. So people ask, there's two things I always want to tell people. And I have a what is Don and Maui video, and I think I go into this in detail. So um, check out my YouTube channel for that. I think it's the first thing you see, but there's this, uh, build a .NET Maui app with a Blazor app, right? Okay. So there's two things. You got a .NET Maui app and a Blazor app, and you can smush your Blazor app into a .NET Maui app as much or as little, a little bit, a lot, a little bit, a lot. You can do like one component. You can do the whole thing, whatever you want to do. Right? So for example, when you do a final new project, you can create a new new Blazor app right here. In fact, let's just do it. Let me just open Visual Studio. Let's just do it. Let's just make it happen. We should also try to do like the it would be cool. I mean, I'll, I'll do the other view too. I'll do the drawing view to see how it works. So it's amazing. Oh, so amazing. guy, thank you so much for the so super amazing. chat. I don't know what the super chat says, though. Super chat says, thanks for the great four hour down in Maui course. Here's a coffee or tea. Thanks guy. I appreciate that. So let's say you come in here, um, and you create a new project and of course I've updated visual studio. So it's going to take its uh, time over here. There we go. It's happening. And you do, um, ba -ba 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 Maui. You get Maui app, you get Maui Blazor app, you can do that. 
And yeah, you just create that app, do a thing, create the thing. So people always ask like, hey, how can I, how can I create and take stuff from the web to mobile to desktop to here, here, right? Now, um, good question from Turbo in the chat. Uh, is this still only available in preview? Visual, it, the .NET MAUI is generally available, the SDK, things like that. But .NET MAUI tooling inside of Visual Studio is in the Visual Studio preview. But you can install it side by side. There's no reason not to do that. Oh, I need to, uh, ooh, I got it. Ooh, oh gosh, I accept this stuff. All right, I'll do it. You win. Okay, so check this out. All right, let me make this a little bit. That is pretty big. I don't know. Y'all can you can see that? Okay. So over here we have all of our normal dependencies. We got properties. We got data. We got pages, and these pages are Razor pages, right? So this is just Razor syntax in here. But if you go into the main page of the application, what you'll actually be able to see over here is that there is this Blazor Web View control, which is pretty cool. And this is built into .NET MAUI, a hundred percent. Oh, and they actually spiced it up a little bit. They actually fixed up some other things. There. That's interesting. So inside of here, you just have over here a little bit of Blazor code. So you add this Maui Blazor, this little uh, web view developer tools. You add your normal services and bingo, bango, you're totally good to go. So if I just deploy this here, let's just see what happens. Okay. And I feel like I, I feel like there's so much new all the time happening. <laughs> in 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 visual studio i just feel like I, I there's so much happening oh my gosh mr groves coming in with a 20 dollars super chat thank you for the great content the four-hour course really helped me get my project underway wow fantastic oh that's amazing i spent so much time <laughs> building those like 40 hours of my life oh my gosh thank you so much mr groves do i have alerts on in this thing where's my alerts at oh my gosh hold on How do my alerts aren't working over here? Uh, it's oh, amazing. There it is. So amazing, so amazing. I was like, why is it not working? Okay, cool. <laughs> oh, cool. All right, so check it out. So, so look at this. This is a dot a Blazor application inside of .NET Maui. Okay. Now, the thing to remember is that, like, yes, here this is a Blazor view, but like, I do have a wide monitor. Yes, yeah. Um, I could do something like a, a vertical stack layout over here. And then I could do something like, uh, I don't know, like a, a button text uh, native button. And then I could do like spacing of like 10 or something. How does that work? Uh, I probably need to re restart it or something like that. But uh, how do I get rid of this little thing? But I have like a native button up here. I don't know why this isn't here. Maybe I'll do a grid. Row definitions. Let's try this out. I don't know why I did that. You don't even need that. Oh, there's no spacing. Does that work? Let me refer. Let me let me re re reboot it. This should work. We should be able to like blend these two worlds together. So this Blazor web view is like a native control. Um, there we go. I got it working. There we go. Boop probably just the hot reloadiness it wasn't good so here we go so check it out so we have a we have a blazer app and a native view back and forth here right so you can share state between the two of them if you want right so this is like a native control this is a web view you can take just a single little control and put it in there so for example if i wanted to uh i don't know instead of putting all of main put like uh pages in there and do like here we go, pages, and then do pages of uh, counter. Does that work? Again, I might need to hop. I need to might need to refresh this. Let's see if this works over here. Sometimes with the Blazor Web, you can't really like swap it out. But um, I'm gonna tell it what to load. I'm gonna say just load a single page over here. There we go. Now we just get a page, right? So we 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 just use a component. You know what I mean? So that, that's kind of cool. But I saw my native button, I have this in here. So I could build a page and blend together web and native technology together. And then I can reuse that entire app as well. So for example, let's say I went in and I said, I wanna create a, add a new project and I'm gonna add a 
Razor class library? Right, like this. What does GA mean, Tarlin? And Tarlin asks, general availability, Tarlin. That's what that means. So general availability means that it is a general stable release. Um, that means that it's out. It's not in preview. It's not in beta. It's not in any of those things. You're good to go. Generally available. Uh, sometimes they call it GM, Gold Master. Um, RTM, release to manufacturing. So all those things. So here, like, imagine now I come in and I say add project reference. And I'm going to add this project reference. Now, what should happen, it should be able to go into this counter. And I should be able to say... Component one. All right. Now this is a this is a whole nother file that lives over here. And this component it says this is a component <laughs> defined in this thing over here, right? So it's like just a little bit of of, of stuff over here. Yeah. So they go. So with Emray, aka, is asking you know like, hey, HTML CSS much easier. Yeah. Go to town there, right? So here now, boom. Now we have you know, stuff that's built into my app, one that's in a separate Razor class library. So if you had your, you know, your your code in a separate Razor class library, you could bring that over. In fact, if you went over to the uh, .NET, uh, sorry, Microsoft slash .NET podcast app, which I've only been talking about for like ever, this one, uh, this is pretty cool. It's this beautiful app. There's one written completely in .NET MAUI and one written completely in uh, Blazor with .NET MAUI. Here's the mobile Blazor. And you go into this app and you'll see that actually, this is pretty cool, is that the the web app is all just project references. There's like really not a lot in here at all. There's just a few package references, a few things set up, splash screens, but it's a .NET MAUI project. And boom, you're good to go, which is so cool. Should we try to use this this view? I kind of want to use this this other view. So we, I, I know there's lots of questions. So we're, we're totally, I'm, I'm there. Now, oh, I should also say here, remember that that this Blazor app is not WebAssembly. It's not Blazor server. It is just Blazor hybrid. And that's like a third option of Blazor, okay? Because what that means is that a .NET MAUI app already has a .NET runtime that's optimized for iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows. So your code is just running over here inside of inside of your .NET MAUI application. That's the benefit. You're gonna get the most performant application inside of there, which is cool. And then you can deploy your web app, you know, with you know Blazor server, or Blazor web, web assembly, whatever you want, if that makes sense. Ooh, okay. Let's go back and answer. Hopefully that hopefully that answers. Your Blazor question. So that that's one. You can take your Blazor and, and Blazor components and share them in a .NET MAUI application. You can't go the other way. You can't like take your .NET MAUI XAML and views and bring them into the web. That's not a thing that exists yet. However, there's many open source projects that are looking at doing that. Like my buddy Frank's uh, Wii project, O O U I. He did it for Xamarin and Forms, which is pretty cool. Um, and I think to uh, Tola is here, which is like, how do you make that responsive? UI, you know, work in, in some aspects there. All right, good question. All right, let's see. Good questions. All right, what other questions do we have? There's so many questions. How am I? I'm great. I'm fantastic. I'm really excited to be back streaming, hanging out. 200 people. What? What is happening over here? Y'all are ridiculous. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. I got a video. My next video putting out next week is called Why MVVM and Why Should You Use It? I feel like we, uh, someone someone blame me that I didn't explain MVVM enough. So we're there. So that that's this question. Boom. Uh, good to go. Uh, will I create a lot of questions? Will I create a .NET Maui advanced course? Yes. Um, if y'all haven't known, many people have said it already. But um, in general, people have 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 maybe seen my course. Eighty eight thousand people have seen the course thus far but i have a four hour video workshop to build apps from start to finish so if you're starting looking at forward get started that's the place to go definitely check that out um, that'd be super rad um, and that has a full workshop that i built as well um, part of the 
.NET presentations repo, part of the .NET foundation, which is super cool. And what I want to do is I want to add more modules onto there. So the next thing I'm going to add on is databases, uh, maybe a web request, you know, scaffold out a backend for it so you can call into that. And then I uh, probably want to do um, new user preferences would be cool to set light mode, dark mode. And then I don't know about authentication. I got to think about authentication. If we have a backend, we could have authentication in it. And a lot of people are interested in uh, also me doing and uh, talking about like, you know, CI, CD and things like that. So it's on my list there. But if you have ideas, uh, drop me, uh, drop me a, a, a DM on Twitter or on the, that video. Uh, I've been looking at all those comments. which have been super good. Uh, authentication is a big topic that Andre, Andrew, uh, that's for sure. And I still need to investigate. There's a, there's a good video out there, uh, by Jose. His channel is Jose Async, which I think is, which is pretty cool. YouTube.com. I'm just going to go to YouTube. I'm going to find this video um, from, uh, I just typed in .NET Maui. I think it's identity server, but I think it's probably like a good, uh, yeah. Oh, he did it in Spanish too. That's cool. Uh, here you go. So this is a good, I'm going to do a shout out to Jose Async. Drop him a, drop him a follow, a subscribe or whatever. That's cool. He does it. Oh, he does it in Portuguese. Oh, very cool. Um, he has this whole video on authentication with identity server. So I think it's probably at least a good start for y'all to like take a look at uh, in general. But I know the team is working real intense on intense, intent, intense, really active on, on other stuff too. Whoa. Okay, cool. Um, what else do we have? Green show Spain. Whoa, cool. Uh, okay, perfect. We finally getting Don and Maui and VS, not preview Mac. So no. Down in Maui is GA, generally available, the SDK, the tools of projects um, in .NET 6. It comes with .NET 6, but the tooling is inside it's amazing, of so amazing, so amazing. Leandro, thank you so much. I don't know what, what are AR, ARS currency. Thank you so much for the super chat. Argentinian peso. Whoa. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. Like three, four bucks. Oh my gosh, that's a whole coffee. You just bought me a coffee. I'm going to totally go drink a coffee, ride my bike later today. Thank you so much. Mwah. Um, <laughs> Hopefully that answered all your questions. That's awesome. Okay, cool. Um, hmm. Yes, so the preview, the, so Visual Studio releases every three months, I'm pretty sure, uh, from preview. So I think every month there's like a new preview that's out. So we're in preview two right now. Um, if you open up your Visual Studio installer over here, uh, let's go and do that. Let's go and stop this here. Oop. So here I have a, I have this one, which is, whoa. oh my gosh, what's happening here? I'm zoomed in all crazy. I don't know if y'all can see this. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. I don't know if it, I don't know if OBS actually zooms or not, but 1713 preview two. So that's where the support is at. And that's what you'll want to take a look at and that'll update. So I think August, there's a big event, .NET Conf focus event. So probably want to check that out. Oh, maybe it correlates with something, who knows? Um, so definitely you want to be checking that out. Um, but it should be August. Maddie said August. If you, if you haven't checked out the videos from Build, there's a Build playlist on the .NET YouTube. Definitely give that a look. All right, we're, get, we're going, it's happening. Um, I'm going to jump up and down over here. Okay, so Danny asks, the only thing that's been holding me back from using Donnie Maui is they don't have a native MP4 player. Uh, take a look at the podcast app. There's, it's all built in. You just grab that code, Danny. I mean, there's not just like a control to be like, oh, I'll play this thing and do all this stuff. You got it. There's the native bits and pieces that you need to implement there as well. So take a look at that. Ooh, this would be fun. I'll do this one. Kind of like I just did with Blazor. So someone just asked, Victor said, how can we create pocket sized UI fragments? Kind of like a component. How do we do that? Okay, let's let's uh, do this over here. I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom. Let's do this here. Boop. Can you use a canvas? Yes, you can use a canvas. We'll do canvas. We'll do a canvas next. That's that's this thing here. The the view, the drawing view. M Ray. Uh, I think maps will be available in .NET 7 um, if you need them in your app, but I think there's some open source stuff that's already out there. <laughs> yeah. All right, so um, what you can do 
is right now, let's say we have this, this uh, button over here. What you could do is let's do something like let's add a new folder. And let's say components and then or controls. Sometimes people call them. But let's add a new thing here. And what I'm going to do under Don and Maui is add a new content view in XAML. And you can name it whatever you want. So let's say um, registration form, right? And then inside this uh, registration form, you could do, um, let's say, first name. And then do this. And then you could do like an entry. You could do text, uh, you know, placeholder, I don't know, something like this, right? Just have like a thing. There we go. And then there we go. Let me say last name. And then what you could do is, uh, I don't know, do like a spacing. I don't know, probably like I would do like a margin on this. I'd be like margin. And then do like 0, 10, 0, 0. Cool. And then what you should be able to do is, uh, let's say I did this and put this up here. And I said I need a button. Cool. And I said a margin. Answer in your question five. All right. Um, <laughs> let's see if this works. This should work. So if I come over here now and I say uh, components, XML and S. Components, components, there we go. And then I do components, registration form, like that. Do this. Yeah, it's like this. And then what we would do is hopefully see the registration form. There you go. Check that out. Boom. Right. So like, like that. And then I could probably do like a, you know, I don't know why my hot reel is not working. It's being a, just being a butt, but yeah, basically that, right. Um, so you can kind of just do that there. So now we've like reused this. So if I really wanted to, I could do, I don't know what my hot reload is. Oh, it is working. Okay, cool. Grid dot row two, like that. Like that. So now we got reusable components, like that. The demo gods are against you. It now it was working. I don't know. It seems but something's not refreshing. But that's okay. It's there. I bet if I deleted this and then I add it back, I bet it would work. Yeah. There you go. So something like that, right? So that's like what I would look look at there. Now, good question about passing data. Now, I like never do this, although I definitely should. <laughs> is is I should actually learn how to do this. It's very easy in Blazor with the parameters, which I just wish we had in my personal opinion, um, Radoslav. Uh, but to do that, what you're gonna need to do is create a. Hmm, you're going to create a thing. Someone help me somebody. What is it called? Um, where is it? Sometimes these, these get me content view. Here we go. So what you'd want to do, let me just drop this in here, right? So you'd want to do something like this here. Boom. So for example, you'd want to do this bindable property down here. So we can do this here. So let's copy and paste this puppy. So boop. And then what I'm going to do back here is add a bindable thing here. So this would be, oh, stop it. There we go. And this would be registration form. There we go. Cool. Mm -hmm. Bindable property, card title, type of this. We have a form. So this kind of like defines the parameter, if you will. Right. And then if we go to the docs, because I don't know how to do anything in life. Um, define the UI. Yeah, that's the title. Yes. So this does a 
binding to the card title. Now, okay, cool. So perfect. So instead of doing this, we could do a label and we could do text here. And then you do a, actually it's really not that hard. You do a binding to card title, fallback value, and you could do hello world like that. Uh, all right. And then what you do is you come over to your main page and you could do card title equals my title like that. That's not bad. Let's see if this works. Aaron says it makes me feel better seeing professionals looking at docs makes me feel not so bad. Yeah, look at docs all the time here. Check it out. Uh, that didn't work. Why didn't that work? Uh, ooh, that should have worked. That should have said that one should have said my title. Let's see what I did wrong. Oh, I wonder if I did. Ooh, I bet I did. Yeah, okay, here we go. I know what I did wrong. I know what I did wrong. Yeah, so what I need to do is I need to go into here and I need to set the binding context equal to this. All right, let's read. This should be it. I need to set up the binding context. Yes, Denny says, you gotta set up the binding context. And so does Aiden. It's got a blue monkey. That's pretty cool. I got a blue monkey next to your name there. Let's see if this works. I look at docs all the time. That's literally my job is I'm always looking at docs all the time. <laughs> oh, it worked. Oh my God, it worked. Uh, the fallback value didn't work though. Oh, no, that makes sense. The fallback value didn't work down here at the bottom because uh, it I set the binding to this and the, the default is that. So that's kind of fascinating. Uh, in general, but I guess I could do like font size you know, 20 or something. Does that work? So pump it up. Cool. And then if I go down here and I say, oh, I'm just having so much fun. I'm learning. I never do this and I should do this all the time because that was actually really easy. Card two. Uh, it didn't, but I need to refresh it or remove it. Oh, there you go. It's card two. Card two, my title. What's my favorite monkey? Uh, ooh, my favorite monkey is the uh, Duke Langer monkey uh, out of Vietnam. I got to see them in person, which was super duper cool. The red shanked Duke Langer. They only live on like one little tiny island, Tarlin. Um, so good question there. Um, then the second would be the golden tamarind monkey. Capuchin is also very cute as well. Um, so it's pretty cool. I'll upload the sample or whatever. <laughs> Whenever we finish exploring and doing stuff. Oh, uh, should we do a drawing view? Someone wanted to do this. Um, uh, there, let's do this. Uh, let me, let me, let me see. Let's do the drawing view. Um, let me answer a few more questions first here. Um, Cause y'all ask a lot of questions. Whoa, Carlos, I think, I think I shouted you out, but Carlos, if not, welcome to the code monkey crew. The sweet, sweet emotes. Um, and Emre as well. Uh, yeah, I will, Jose, I will do a new video there uh, in general, but yes. Uh, what other questions do we have? Way up top, way up top. Um, so Victor, we got that, boom, you're good to go with your sweet new views. I'm super excited about that. Uh, okay, cool, we're there. Into Nougat is not available. I don't know, I'll ask the team. Okay, I'm gonna write it down, in tune in tune i'm assuming it's i think it's open source so they're there map view answer that boom 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 adam what is the best place to get a full tutorial my youtube obviously and gerald's youtube and the workshop which is really what my my mind goes through um so this is the workshop boom and then did you know that I worked very close with Matt Sokup, Code Mill Matt on Twitter, and uh, we worked with some 
<clears throat> some team members to build an entire .NET MAUI learning path. We updated the Xamarin one to .NET MAUI and introduced all brand new .NET MAUI features inside of it, which is super cool. So there's like seven or eight modules. We're going to be adding more. Really excited about it. Doing some Blazor hybrid stuff in there too. So that'll be there. So give that a look. Alex, I'm looking forward to your presentation on .NET MAUI. <laughs> now that you know all this stuff. Boom. Uh, cool. What else we got? There's tons. YouTube. Don't put in Don M. Maui. In fact, did you know that on YouTube specifically, you can go to the hashtag. There's hashtags. And there's hashtag Don M. Maui. And when you do that, you're going to see all the Don M. Maui videos that are like tagged appropriately. Different popular ones. Well, I'm on there right now. Wow. That's cool. Um, all their cool ones. It's kind of a cool discovery mechanism because it's sort of, it's it's different than just the search. There's people that are actually taking the time to tag things correctly um, and do that there. So definitely give that a look. There's all sorts of good stuff. So like Coding with Zaidi is doing a bunch of stuff on there too, which is cool. Gerald, of course. So all sorts of good stuff. And of course, look at the Xamarin tutorials because they're, they're almost the same. Uh, I'm, I'm not a teacher. I like to pretend I'm a teacher. Um, that is for sure. My neighbors are teachers. They're amazing. Uh, yeah, okay, I'll do that. Okay, cool. We're kind of there. Okay, we answered that. Uh, oh, I heard that ABP will be supporting down at Maui shortly. Ah, uh, a. Yeah, uh, yeah, the ABP framework, right? I think is what you're talking about, Colin. I think it's just a framework to do stuff like microservices and other stuff like that. Yeah, I talked to them a while ago, but I need to like actually in investigate stuff. I'm not really sure exactly, but I think that works with like Angular and Blazor and other stuff. So I don't know. I think it's just open source stuff. I hope more open stuff source you know open source stuff works with us too. So that'd be cool. How to make something eye catching from XAML. Ooh, that's a tough one. You gotta be a, you know, there's designers, a bunch of stuff. I don't know. Uh, can you show how to convert common UI libraries to on a Maui, such as a pancake view? Um, I, I can't, cause I don't know as much to be honest with you. I honestly haven't built a custom control in like several years just because I haven't needed to. Um, but I would take a look at what, um, you know, I would take a look at is well, either the pancake view, but also take a look at what Ellen Ritchie's doing and also, um, the shark NATO stuff, sharp, sharp NATO, not shark NATO, sharp, uh, NATO. Oh, and also, you know what? There is, um, a dev blog on this actually. Uh, great question. There is a, a whole blog on. There's two of them. So head to the Xamarin blog. There's two great blogs, one from Louis Matos and one from Michael Rumpler, who did the Mr. Gestures. Um, they talk all about converting libraries and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. So take a look at that for sure. Do you have any plans on Google and Facebook authentication with Don Maui? Uh, maybe authentication at some point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, how do I register a test? I don't know. I don't really test. <laughs> Unit testing recommendations. Yeah, you know what? I do have unit testing recommendations. Um, Alan, Alan, Richie, he just put out something. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, Thomas Cheese Baron did some stuff. I like that. I gotta find his tweet. I don't know where it's at. Oh, here we go. Yes. Check this out. So Alan took the X unit device runners that the team was using in the .NET MAUI repo, and then he put it in a NuGet package. That was pretty cool. I mean, Alan, you could have just asked the team and just did it in the repo, but that's fine. Uh, okay, uh, so there we go. Else unit testing, yeah. X unit, N unit, all the things, all the units. 
are there already productive applications out where we're now? Yeah, there's a bunch of them out. There's a bunch of people out there. We, um, we have some case studies and some customer showcases as well on there, but we mentioned some, I think at Donet Conf, um, last year. So definitely take a look at that. There's some I can't talk about yet. So as well, uh, -huh. but, 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 so again, if you're just coming in non preview VS August, I think is the time frame. What is the process to contribute to the .NET Maui repo? Who can we contact if we need help? You just go to the .NET Maui repo. Um, great question. So you go to github.com slash .NET slash Maui. Here. That's where we're at. How do you contribute? And you scroll, 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 scroll. And then you do this one, development guide. Now this development guide is going to help you set up your machine to contribute and get going with .NET maui so it's a little bit more you know a little bit more but they've really tried to streamline the process as much as they can so i'd recommend maybe like a vm or a separate machine for development you know not your main dev machine things like that if you're doing stuff there's a bunch of stuff in here so definitely take a take a peek at that one if you're looking there that is for sure Ooh, so many questions uh there is a new PM for Don and my Beth just joined the team as a product manager, which is pretty, pretty rad. A bunch of interns are starting up now as well, which is super cool. What other questions we have? All right, let's do something. Now I've answered a bunch of questions. I'm going to come back up. We we're talking about unit testing. I'm going to come back. Let's do the drawing view. Let's just see if we can get that working. You know what I mean? Why not? Okay. Why not? Okay, so here we go. We're gonna install the toolkit. Okay, so let's do that. I really am exploring. I'm very. Oh, where's my pro? That's not. That's not what I wanted. Where's my project at? Community toolkit. And yes, the community toolkit for MVVM works with Don Maui because I use it in my workshop. Oh my gosh. So let's do this. Let's do manage nuggets. Uh, community toolkit. Uh, oh, browse. Mm, this one. Install. Okay. We want that. And then we want to do this. This is cool. I like this. They have one namespace for the entire toolkit, which is cool. All right. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm just gonna jam everything into this page. Um, let's put it at the bottom. Let's do a, a signature page down here. So we'll do this. Boop. And ideally, watch this. I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you how to do a drawing control in seconds. This binds to my lines. I, I need to understand what they're doing there. I don't know if I. Oh, I wonder what my lines is. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, let's just put this in here. Let's just do like maybe like 100. And this would be. I guess this would be toolkit. Yeah, it should be. They should put toolkit, not views, because like that. You know, maybe if I need my lines, let's do that, and let's do grid dot row two. Let's just see if that works. Should I don't know. I don't know. Never done it before, but I did see, and there's a cool sample. If you actually go to the um the dot net YouTube YouTube dot com slash dot net uh here. You can go here and you can do this one. Um, both Pedro and um, Vlad came on and they talked about this. He had a whole sample app, which was really cool about using the drawing control. Oh. Is it in there? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh 
Uh, oh. That's weird. Maybe I'll do views then? I feel like that should work. Let's see. Oh, you watch it, I'm right? Nice. Uh, oh, you need to start using. Oh, did I do something wrong? Oh, yeah, you know. You gotta follow the guides, James. Uh, yes, there is. Oh, no. Okay, well, is it not in here? Is an extension method, yeah. I feel like they need to update that documentation. Joshua knows. Joshua knows. There it is. That one. Use Maui Community Toolkit. I remember them showing that, but I don't understand why it's not in the documentation. So, and in fact, we could do that right now. You can actually edit this. <laughs> then you could say, hey, go in. Oh, I can't edit it. Oh, I'm not signed in. That's why. I don't know. Oh, no. I don't know. That's weird. I feel like that should have worked. I'll have to look at their sample then, because then something must be funky. They did rename the commands, yep, the community toolkit. And it's funny because I should have just watched the repo and then like, sure enough, right? It's like, oh, they did it. I wonder if there's like source generators or something happening. Oh, there is. That is why. Oh, that's fascinating. But I don't see that one in there. Was it Gwids? Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering. Oh, interesting. It seems to be building. Ah, what is that? I'm using the wrong nougat package. Oh my gosh, what? Was that not it? No, that's it. I am under pre-release, but let me go to nougat. Like I just <laughs> typed in nougat. Uh, Oh, you, uh, maybe, oh, uh, why do I have RC3? That's not correct. I bet that's it. I bet that's it. Let's do a, let's do a clean over here and a rebuild. Oh, that's really strange that, why would, why would Nougat prefer RC3 over 1.0? That's odd. Ah, okay. I think something is stuck. So let me do this. Let me do, um, I just run this as an Android issue. Let's see. Run. Oh my gosh, it's running. It's happening, people. I did, I did, well, I did check pre-release, but sh shouldn't it just always take the most recent one? I don't know. Look at that. 
I'm drawing, I'm drawing, I'm drawing. Drawing, drawing. Now I'm not data binding, so it goes away, right? You know what I mean? Thanks, Thomas. I appreciate that. I like my beard too. Look at that, how's that? Boop -a -doop -a -doop, boop -a -doop -a -doop. Got a drawing view in my app. Now there's a full like, sample app that they have, right? That's like shows like saving drawings, doing drawings. So if you need like signatures, you need to val verify stuff's on there. Like take a look at that, right? But this is pretty sweet. Here's my signature. Here's my, here's my sig. Oh, 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 there we go. <laughs> that's pretty cool. I don't know. That's pretty cool. Aaron's going to a hackathon. Good luck, Aaron. Crush it, dude. That's rad. Okay. Drawing view done. So you don't really need a signature pad, right? You can create your own signature pad and customize how you want. What you really need is just a drawing view. And this is what all, this, all a signature pad is, is a drawing view. So that's way better. In general, it's going to work the same across all the different platforms, right? So that's pretty rad. Okay, cool. What other questions do we have? Another question? Yeah, I don't understand why it... Oh, interesting. Yeah, I guess I did select pre-release, but I, I figured it would, if there is a stable, it would release stable, but pick stable. It's interesting. Ah, shenanigans. Uh, let's see. But, 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 we're talking about unit... <laughs> so many questions. Mm -hmm. Wow, so many good questions. Okay. Uh, wow, wow, wow. Wow, amazing. AMA, ask me anything. Correct. Um, bu 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 wow, so many. Okay, here we go. Nope. Okay, here we go. <laughs> oh, here we go. Okay. Um, So Lars says, currently you have a Xamarin Forms team. I think about going iOS and Android instead of migrating to .NET MAUI. Well, I mean, your Xamarin Forms app should migrate pretty seamlessly over to .NET MAUI. There's documentation on how to do it. I'm going to probably do a live stream, try to upgrade maybe my stream timer over to it, which would be pretty cool. Um, I mean, it depends what you're building, right? I mean, ideally .NET MAUI, you can use to build a single app, to build all your apps, um, to do desktop and mobile, just mobile, what you want. I think if, you know, .NET MAU, if you you have Xamarin Forms today, like you don't have to migrate immediately. I'm not, I'm gonna wait until, you know, I need to, you know what I mean? Why add extra work to myself? All new projects I'll create with .NET MAUI and gives it time to continue to bake and, you know, as more updates come out for it. But I think in general, it's like, you know, if you have an application that is just, really just deeply tied to the operating system or doing only augmented reality or something like that, then maybe, but based on what you're building, you know, there's a framework for you. So someone was asking about like, oh, should I pick, you know, Flutter versus native versus .NET MAUI, this and that. I, I usually say prototype it, prototype an app um, and all the different frameworks, something that isn't extremely complicated because you're learning all the, that technology too. So Everyone loves a to-do application or note-taking application. That seems reasonable. Um, put a list view in there, put some items in there, see how that feels. Uh, and then, you know, I think a prototype nowadays, in my personal opinion, isn't just, oh, I'm gonna create a little to-do app. It should really be, what's the end-to-end -end life cycle look like? What does it look like to bundle up an application? What does it look like to put it into source control and to get it into, Azure DevOps or GitHub Actions or, you know, some other, some other CI CD system. And of course, .NET MAUI is new. So there's still a lot of things being built around an ecosystem there. Um, but of course, Xamarin's not. So you're gonna have a lot of wealth and knowledge from the last decade on bringing that into C Sharp. So um, there's that, but um, it just depends on what you're building, Lars. I don't have an exact answer for you, um, except for it's been 10, Oh my gosh, 10, 12, 12 years I've been building with Xamarin. I've been pretty happy and now down in Maui. So see where it goes. But yeah, it just, uh, the other thing that I hear, you know, some people say is like, well, you know, my, you know, if they have like team members that leave and they have to hire new team members, like, what are they going to do? But 
if you're rewriting, you know, it's, it's a, it's a good time to reevaluate your needs, right? I can't answer everybody's problem um, or questions. I mean, um, cause every app is different. That's what I've always said probably for the last decade is there's a lot of different frameworks, a lot of different tools, and some might be right for you and some might not be, but especially if you're coming from C sharp and .NET world and you want to build these cross platform apps, or even just for a single platform, I think it's, um, it's super duper great. Right. And of course, there's a lot of other great stacks too that keep you in that C-sharp.net world like Uno and Avalonia. So take a look there too. Mm -mm. Samir asked, great question. Uh, uh, I was coming from Xamarin Forms slash native development. How welcoming would .net Maui be? Very much so, especially Xamarin Forms. They're very, very close. Any timelines? Dintwe asks for eShop on containers can be ported to .net Maui. We're doing it right now. Oh my goodness, it's happening. We have a whole ebook on migrating the application, what we had to do. So yes, it's happening, hopefully within the next month. What's the best resources for XAML UI design? I think are just documentation and then just like looking around and Googling for different UI design. Um, Leah Maris uh, is pretty awesome. She does a bunch of great blogs on like, you know, mocking out UI. Javier um, does a good job. There was this, there's two great repos, github.com, Javier. Where's Javier? Javier Suarez. Who also has a great YouTube channel as well. So Javier had two. Yeah. Javier had two different GitHub uh, repos, which is copy link, which was Xamarin Forms, good looking UI. And then he also had a, a I think a Maui one, awesome Maui, maybe awesome.net Maui. There we go. Yeah. So that one's pretty cool because there's like a list of resources in here. So if you actually go into the awesome.net Maui repo, you can see a bunch of samples that are in here the podcast app, the Maui sample, all these things. There's workshops, there's tools, there's UI stuff, which is really cool. Um, plugins that are available. So this is pretty, you know, neat in general. So definitely give that a look. And then the other one was the, I think it has one for, for that as well, for the good looking UI, but here's the, the Xamarin forms. Good. So this is kind of cool. You can just kind of scroll and like, look at images and videos. You see something you like, just grab the XAML, grab the styles and go to town. You know what I mean? Like here's a you know, all these things. So they should mostly just work, which is pretty cool. Boom. Uh, yeah, Vic, Vic asks, can I make a video? I'm making high quality UX design. If I, if I personally made <laughs> high quality UX design, I would do it, but I, I don't know if I do. I like to think I make okay UI design, um, it should be great. I haven't seen the new Stack Overflow dev survey. That'd be interesting. Um, I think it, I, I saw the, there was someone tweeted about the cloud one, Aiden, like uh, Firebase and Azure and all those things. I need to look at it though. Uh, so uh, Saddam bin Syed asked about Bluetooth. You'd probably want to look at the plugin.ble uh, Xamarin. That should all just work. Um, overall, I, I'm not, I'm pretty sure it's going to all work with .NET Maui in general, but we also got to make that work, but boom, I, I mean, it's so Bluetooth is super simple or shiny, uh, shiny github.net. Let's see. Shiny is also great. Um, is a great resource for Bluetooth LE as well. I'm pretty sure he's got Bluetooth and there's a bunch of stuff in there. Give those a look for sure. Uh, Shivrenda asked for an MVU model view update. I, I need to get on that train. So I, I teach what I know. <laughs> is there a converter for forms? There is a command line tool. But I don't think it's finished yet, but to be honest with you, I don't know. It's probably easier just to do it manually. My opinion. What do I know? I haven't done it yet. So, uh, Jose, great question. What technology should you pick to install apps? MSIX. That's what the documentation says. If you go over to docs.microsoft.com slash .net slash Maui, 
publish. The team is crushing it. Windows, boom, MSIX is how you do it because it's a Windows App SDK WinUI 3 application. And that's how you do it. So that's the only one you can do. So boom. And you can do self-signed cert. You can do it to the App Store. You can do it not in the App Store, things like that. But this will walk you through the whole shebang, the whole thing. But yes, that is how to do it. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, let's see if we have any other questions in here. Can you build in preview with code analysis turned on? I don't know, Joshua. I've never really used code analysis. I'm. I just don't use all the things. Back when I worked at like Canon back in the day, we had someone like focused on code coverage, code analysis, all this other stuff, but I haven't really done it. Let's see. I do have a wide monitor. I did a whole video, I think, on my wide my my wide monitor. Um, we're there. Alvin says beer's looking cool. It's looking okay. It's looking like four out of ten. Yeah. Oh, this is back in the blazer. Oh, yeah, we're going. Okay, we're happening. We're here. We're going. Let's jump to the bottom. <laughs> oh, uh, Car asked, do you have any tool recommendations for tracking memory leaks? Well, there's still profiling tools available uh, in general. Um, I'm not really an expert in that field, though. That'd be cool. How do you open blob files? Not, I don't know what's in your blob file. Just file, system.io looking above. If I'm developing a .NET Blazor app, how can I add a project for the web? Good question. So ideally, we could do that. So let's come here. Oh, okay, so we have in this application today, Oh, there is a whole readme. Look at this. It literally tells me what I should have done. So this thing here has Maui app and then Razor class library. So ideally, I should be able to add a new project in here. So you'd have three projects. Um, let's do a Blazor app. Let's do a WebAssembly app, Blazor app. OK, cool. Uh, Yes. Yeah. So ideally, you would have three uh, over here. And then what you should be able to do is say add uh, dependencies, add project reference. You add the Maui, uh, the Razor class library, which would be shared between the two, right? So then if I go into my. And ideally, you could put your pages over there too, right? So you could you could do that too. But you would do like component one like this, and then you set this as your startup, like this, and then you'd have your Blazor app, and you'd have your .NET Maui app, and they would share the components between the two of them. So you'd have your web app and then your .NET Maui application. That's what you would do. Mm -hmm. So here's the the Blazor app. Counter and there's that component. So that's shared between now my Donna Maui app and my Blazor application as well. It's pretty rad. So that's pretty cool. Awesome. Uh, Saddam, I, I think I answered that already. So um, you don't need to you don't need all caps. It's very inappropriate. Um, but yes, there is an assistant tool. I don't know if the Donna Maui stuff is there. I think there's a branch for it, but there is just documentation on how to migrate. So. Blob files contain DLL files. Um, I mean, you can't, you know, just randomly download and install and run DLL files. That's going to be against like App Store EULAs, but there's probably ways of interpreting them. But um, looking above, but yeah, yeah. Let's see what other questions we got now that we've ex just added a whole nother app into here. That's cool. Adam asked, I thought it was released. Uh, it is released. Don and Maui is generally available, just like 
install the Visual Studio 2022 preview. I don't, why is it so hard to install the preview? Just install the preview, check the down in my box, it's done. I run them side by side. You can run them side by side. Just the tooling's not done. Well, that's pretty much done from what I can see. They're, they're working on a few more things. Um. Uh, bup, 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 so many questions. C sharp markup or comet? Um, I don't know. Whichever one you like better. One's MVU style. One's just like a markup extension on top of it. So, Steve, whatever you want. Bup, 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 bup. Thomas likes the beard. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, I haven't seen a broken scroll view at all, though, but uh, DDO6, but definitely open bugs if there are some, but yeah, you know, there'll be releases and updates along the way. You're welcome, CJ. I hope that was helpful. Um, I hope you get to care. I dip it down. Okay, yeah, this is all the pre-release new good stuff. Cool. Okay. Uh, can Maui be flexible enough to remove any need for Xamarin native? I mean, I haven't built a non-Xamarin Forms app in six, like five years, six years maybe. So yes, I'd assume. I hope it depends what you're building. But Frank, Frank, my buddy Frank, who does like iCircuit and Calca and things like that. I mean, it depends on what you're building, but. He said he's all in on the Donut Maui, so that's good, which I like. Gia, it's already officially released. Whenever it gets done <laughs> for Linux support. I think there's a community uh, version that was, was being worked on, but... You know, the team is focusing on iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows, making sure that is top quality continue to crush the bugs that y'all report uh that's a good question from rick is it worth uh it to convert a production xamarin forms app to don and maui well it depends i mean eventually so someone was asking about xamarin forms and xamarin being how long is that support i think two years it's in the blog post from when don and maui went ga which was in may at build um so it's up to you um if you want to migrate eventually you'd probably have to if there's breaking changes in ios and android in which your app needs to support in general, right? So you would probably want to um, do that uh, there in general. So you, what you'd want to do is like work probably over time to migrate and move your app. Now, some of the layouts and some of the views are a little bit different. So for example, in stack layouts, there's a new vertical and horizontal stack layout, but they no longer expand. There's no longer an and expands. It's there, but it doesn't do anything. So you might want to like move those over to grids, for example, which are much more optimized. Um, so that's a good case where like just because you move your UI over 100% doesn't mean it's going to 100% be exactly the same. That wasn't the goal because it was to get it as close as possible. But there was a lot of things that were assumptions back then. So there's that. Um, yeah. So things like that. Uh, and then. What else? Um, yeah, just take it. I don't know how big your app is. It, it's, you know, it depends, but all the XAML should come over. Your MVVM stuff should come over. You'd also want to look at like modernizing stuff. So you'd, you'd want to like rip out some older controls, see if there's new controls. I personally want to go all in on the MVVM community toolkit and kind of delete all that MVVM code and just use these new source generators get rid of json.net and upgrade to system text json because it greatly reduces your app size and performance gains as well um so that's what i would say but you're gonna want to do it just maybe over time maybe six months from now maybe a year from now whenever you you know need to but ideally like me like i've released my apps they're in the app store and i'm just gonna kind of roll with that for a while and eventually update them when i need to um when the libraries that I'm using support it fully uh, as well. And if mine don't, then I need to update my own. But a lot of them are starting to go there too. So yeah, that, that's what I would say, Rick. Hopefully that answers your question as well. I don't know if there's any other questions. 
where can I check the Xamarin versus Maui differences? That's a good question. Um, I don't know if there is a doc on it. I'm going to ask the team about that. Um, I feel like we should have that because that was something I just learned uh, too. So yeah, maybe it's on the wiki. Let's look. There's a bunch of migration steps, X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. Oh yeah, there is a bunch of, I think if you just read the migration docs, I think it has a pretty good overview of that from what I can see. There's some backwards compatible stuff. Yeah, there's a lot happening in there, but definitely take a look in there. I don't know if they have a side-by-side -side comparison, but that would be nifty if so. I'll ask the team about that. Good question. Uh, let's see what other questions we have. In-app purchases in .NET Maui? Yeah, my library already supports it. Yep, it already supports .NET 6. Any, any NuGets that I am going to officially support going forward that I put out, I, I put there. But most of them, most of the stuff that I did was replaced with essentials in general. And it's all built into .NET Maui as well. So good question there. Uh, signal R, yeah, I mean, the one that I'd done forever ago. They're all that it's all the same code. I think it's kind of the cool part about Dynamic Maui. It's like if if I did Signal R and Xamarin, you can do Signal R, and you know what I mean. It's like it's the same. It's the same code. Uh, but, but let's see if I got anything up here. Do 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 do. Lottie support in Dynamic Maui. Uh, good question. I think so. I think there's like a new uh. I think it's called Scody. It's a Skia Sharp Lottie thing. Scody, I think it's what it is. Um, I have to look at that, yeah. Do you know when the next minor release of .NET 6 is? Um, I don't know. I think it's every month or so. I think it's every month. So I don't know. I was asking like when stuff comes out. So the last release was June 14th here. So 6031 was the latest release. I think it's every month. It's just not like a release cadence. I'm pretty sure. Good question. But I'm not exactly sure exactly how it works, but that would mean July then, I guess, if I look here. So I look what I'm doing here. I'll show everyone what I'm doing. I went to the .NET website hit download. And then I went to all .NET 6 downloads. And then this will tell you the versions that came out. So this is SDK 300. This is 301 as well. So I think that these will tell you what they are. So like these are just security patches. So I don't think that these have like new things. This is, oh, this one did have .NET Maui support in it, the 300 branch. But you May 10th here. June 14th, so it looks like every month. So it'd be like July sometime, April 12th. So second week in July, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Ko is asking, is it a real live show? Yes, this is a real live show that you're watching. This is really happening. Does Dynamite have a media element? There was one in the community toolkit. I think they're porting it back over Jeffrey um, as well, but I'm sure someone's made one already. Is Visual Studio for ARM ready to support .NET MAUI apps? You can run your .NET MAUI apps on ARM, yes, but Visual Studio 2022, the ARM version, does not support the .NET MAUI workload yet. So, but in the future, it should, because I was talking to Jonathan Peppers about that, and I'm really excited about that, so, um, in general. And I have an ARM machine, it's pretty awesome. <clears throat> Danny says, oh, this is a great question. Danny says, it's weird that Donnie Maui decided to go GA, um, but it's not in the stable VS. Well, here's the thing about .NET is that, and this is actually a really fascinating distinction for like community when I think about this and this decision to go this way is like, 
also Visual Studio for Mac 2022 wasn't like ready. That's in preview too. But you have to remember like .NET is not tied to Visual Studio. Like that's the beautiful part of the open source of .NET is that it can be used in VS Code and Rider and other, the command line, right? In other ways. So since it's completely decoupled from it, it Visual Studio is this beautiful ID that I use every single day, but it enables this new workload mechanism, how .NET is decoupled, that you are able to use the tools that you want here and there. So when the Visual Studio, you know, level of tooling is there, you're good to go. But from an SDK level, what it means is that the API is locked. What it means is that it has a go live license. And what it means is that you can do all of your, you know, builds and compilation and things like that there. But at the same time, when they released that, you had that, you know, tooling available to install side by side. So if you're using stable for everything and then you're using just preview for .NET MAUI stuff, that's there. I only install preview. Maybe because I work at Microsoft, but I've only installed preview for like the last three years at this point because it's awesome and just pretty much, you know, just works as needed. I, I, I like to test stuff early, but I always get the new hotness. Uh, let me see if there's any good questions in here. Mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot of questions about Firebase. I'm not sure. I'll have to ask the team about that. That's a good question, but I think the packages are updated. Maybe not. Um, Un Undertaken was asking about the shell template. It's the same. It's the same stuff. When you do file a new project, you get a shell. So you're good to go. Packaging and compilation is there. You should just put it in CI CD saying it's hard because I got to do publishing. I got to do council. I got to do this different stuff. Boom. Do it in CI CD. Mm, mm, mm. See if I have any other questions down here. What else do we have? Yeah, so Solomon was asking about the Bluetooth support. I dropped a link to the plugin.bluetooth. Um, I don't think there'll be plans to integrate it in directly into .NET MAUI, but there's there. Um, I would say the third party packages are the way to go. That's what I use. Car says, like to merge conflict. Thanks for the shout out for the merge conflicts. Appreciate that. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> Joshua asks, when will a parameterless constructor scenario be available? I mean, I think you can just do that today. I, I don't know, Joshua, what you're looking for. Is there a way to use the camera? Good question. Inside of it, um, you'd have to access and create native views for that. So you'd want to access like the camera two APIs. There's not like a camera view. However, there was one for the older Xamarin community toolkit. So I bet you could pull a bunch of code from there to do that. Eric asks, is SVG the only splash screen option? No, you can override that. You can use the old mechanisms if you want to but I recommend doing the SVG support for it in general. That makes it the easiest, but you could plop in a PNG and your old image assets and things like that if you want to and override that functionality. Just remove the splash screen uh, controls uh, on the platform. So great question over there. So let's say you're in your app here. Down here, these are specifying your app icons, your app splash screens. You can remove those, or you can say, don't do this on specific platforms. And then you could just have your old setup if you wanted to in general. So if you wanted to go that route, you can override those. Yeah. Good question though. Same thing with your icons. If you want to use your older icon packs, you already have them. You can totally do that. I won't be, I will always be just doing this because it's way easier and splash screens are seen for like one eighth of a second. So, yeah. Do you think .NET will be a popular programming language and framework to learn? Can it compete against other things? Well, you know, .NET itself is amazing because you can build literally for anything, or you can build for desktop, for web, for mobile, backends, front ends, serverless, you know, um, um, IOT, 
in, in embedded systems, machine learning, Unity for games, right? So Donna kind of runs everywhere. There are like 6 million developers in the world. Vtome, thank you for the subscription. I appreciate that. Um, I don't know, there's millions upon millions of .NET developers, some building with .NET Maui, others building web applications, backends. I mean, we use it, obviously, .NET extremely heavily at Microsoft, but there's tons of companies, you know, that are out there using .NET Chipotle, good example, Domino's, good example. Um, all sorts of amazing things, right? So being built with it. Um, it's a good question. I mean, I think there's gonna, there's a lot of competition in the in the mobile and desktop space. There's always been, right? There's always been different competition in web platforms and non-web platforms. You even got Swift UI, which is, you know, out there doing stuff, which is cool. Um, Compose from, from that. So it depends, you know, if you're a C-sharp.net developer or you're looking to get into building stuff, I think C-sharp and .net is the best way to go. That's me. I've been doing it for, well, tomorrow will be you know, 36. So I've been doing it for 16 years and I'm here. Yeah. Oh, someone's asking about crash reporting. I think like Sentry just came out with some crash reporting. Maybe also um, Raygun. I'd have to look in that. Yeah. How can you use XAML to bind a page to a view model that has a dependency injection into it? You you register it with the dependency service automatically. So it, you, um, it automatically works. Check out my workshop. It go, goes through that. When is service release two? So I don't, I don't think they're, I don't think they're call it service release two. Um, that'd be funny. SP one service pack one. Um, I don't know. I'm assuming that it's going to come out in uh, July. There'll be like another update. I actually have to ask the team exactly how that works. But I think whenever new versions of .NET, the point releases come out, I think there's new releases that come out. So when you update Visual Studio or you update .NET and your workloads, it should just update. Oh, uh, Aiden asks, trying to add an asset catalog is a pain. Yeah, that's, whoa. But yes, thank you for coming a member. Oh my goodness. Thank you so, so much. I appreciate that. We'll be doing a member exclusive chat. Um, where you can ask me literally anything about anything and I'll answer it. We had a lot of fun on the last one. If you're a member now, you can go back to that previous episode. It's a member only video um, in there so you can see it, which is cool. I haven't done the asset catalogs in it yet, but yeah. Uh, what about hot reload change and coming to C sharp? That, that works today based on the C sharp hot re reload scenarios. So if you got that in there, it'll totally work. So for example, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it works and then we're gonna see if it actually works. So let's see here. Mm, I'm inside the Blazor app. So let me see if the Blazor app is working, but this should work. Let's see. Uh huh? Okay, so, and there's obviously things that the hot reload can support and can't support, you know what I mean? So it kind of depends there. So if we have this, I think if I do the should, yeah. Oh, there we go. So now it's in increasing by 10 every single time. Umberto, thank you for the description. Appreciate that. If we do 100. Uh, yeah. There you go. So that should still work. Now it's going to depend, right? If you're adding new classes and doing a bunch of new stuff, it might might work, may not. Yeah. Uh, Uh, what are the questions do we have in here? And again, it's part of that tooling, the the hot reload stuff. So there's some of these stuff there. Let's see what else we got in here. Bum, 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 bum. William asks, is it Dunham Alley in beta? No, it's in GA. In GA. 
Well, Varang, you should, did you open bugs? Let me know what you can't create. That'd be great to know what issues you're having there. Love to know more. Let us know. Now, Mar Marco asks, uh, Marcio asks a good question. How do I, like, when should I load data um, inside my application? Like, when, when it's displayed? Great question. So, um, if you come in, there's a few different things. So, like, imagine I'm in this main page. So, you can do event to command, you can do a bunch of other things. But what you could do, for example, is you could do, um, you could come in and then oop, you could say override and then there's on a pairing, which still works. That's when it's a pairing. That's the tried and true way of doing it. There's also on navigated from and override on navigated to. So you could use these when they're navigated to, to load data and call into your view model and you're, you're like that. So good to go. Hooter, I don't need, I need to see about this is visible thing because uh, that hasn't been an issue for me. So I'm going to double check that and see what's up with that uh, in general. I don't know. Um, someone was saying about that on, on somewhere else. I need to double check on that. So because I haven't had that issue, but I need to double check it. I've been out for a few weeks. So, yeah. So, Marcio, that, that's how I would do it. Based on that, you could do you could do override on appearing. And then you can also obviously create like a, a base page that goes and like, you know, has like is tied to your view model and all that stuff. That's kind of the same there. Yeah. Bum, 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 bum. I think John, Johnny was asking about hot reload coming to C sharp markup. I, th I think so. I think that should work. Um, or you could look at Comet. I think that has a lot more stuff built in for it in general. I'm just not 100% sure exactly how that slides together. Can we fully customize a shell tab view? I think there is, Johnny, a handler for it. Um, but you could also look at the, like, the Sharp NATO tabs as well if you need to go above and beyond. But I know they're also working on adding more stuff to it as well. Carlos, well, thank you for the it's donation. Amazing, Ooh, super so chat. Amazing, so amazing. Uh, Carlos says, I'm having it, uh, still having issues uploading a dynamic Maui app to iOS device. Same that works okay. I don't. I haven't, I haven't tested that out in a bit. I just haven't really been on it. But I'll try that next week probably and give you, give you shout back. It should. I know there's still, again, that preview tooling is also there too, but... Um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't tested that in a bit. If anything, if you're really into test on device, you could always put it in a CI CD, right? But um, I, I'll ask the team about that and see what's, what's up with that. Oh, John said he had to restart the app all the time. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know exactly how that works in general with the, the C Sharp markup extension. My assumption is it's like how you, where it's called at and like, if you create all of your code in the constructor, how does it know to reload your constructor? It doesn't, you know what I mean? It's not re-executing your constructor. So like with Comet, they have stuff built in to like identify when to do that. But I would ask the community toolkit people like when to do that. That's a good question. Yeah. 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 And of course, like hot reload is always different states, right? Like it's, tricky like when are you doing it when are you not doing it was there a default was there a with like Terrell Terrell says here right like William thank you for the sub appreciate that coming in you know that's a good one there too um so I can't, everyone's asking about fire but let me let me look at the nougat Um, I think the Firebase stuff still all works. Let me look. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, all that stuff should work. I know it's called Xamarin.Firebase messaging, but that has, so you, so here's what you do. You go here and you say, okay, what do I need to use? Like, here's the Firebase messaging. And then see, it says .NET 6. So what you want to do is you want to look at the frameworks it supports. So here is 
like the framework, right? So .NET 6 and Mono Android for this Firebase messaging component for Android, for example. So that should work just fine. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming, I don't know, I don't, I think they didn't want to change the name because people are upgrading and things like that. So this would naturally upgrade, but maybe they'll do that over time. I don't know, but yeah, that should, should work. I wouldn't see why not. My, my opinion. So that should work. Uh, Doug, Douglas asked about the linker um, to reduce app size. Yeah, it's built right in. When you, when you flip, when you, when you come in and you flip this to release mode, it's pre-configured for you automatically, pretty much. So, um, you know, you can come in and you could specify like a, um, I guess that would be a property up here, probably like a linking. I think there's like different linker settings uh, in here, but in general, you should just do that. So, yeah. Uh, Penator, I'm not sure. I mean, I would, I would, I would open on the, um, I would, uh, let me see here. I would. That should be all the Google Play services stuff. So there's a lot of work happening in here. I would inquire here for the Google Play services and Firebase stuff. But I think that that should all work. Yeah, I would, I would give that a peek. I'm not sure. Else, yeah, I'll look at the issues in there as well. But yes, the linker and all that stuff is built in automatically. So I think also, I think if you go into into these, I think it. Yeah, see, there's like, I think it walks you through the different versioning and key store stuff. I'm not sure if it walks through the linker stuff. It's all built in, though. Let me look. Maybe some other guides somewhere. Yeah, here's archived planning. Ooh, so a bunch of stuff coming there. Eventually, yeah. I'm hoping right-click publish works because that'd be pretty cool. I don't have all the answers. I don't work on the team, but yes, I don't have all the answers. I work on an adjacent team. Who just says working with Xamarin have some bugs? Will it be some with Maui? Might be there, might be new ones, might be different ones, software. Don't know. Um, sometimes there's workarounds, sometimes there's not, but yeah, definitely like, you know, no, nothing is 100% perfect. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can flyout and tabs be legally shown together? <laughs> I think I wouldn't see why not. Uh, it should be in shell. You should be able to use both of them at the same time. You can have flyout items and you can have tab um, items. Totally just fine. Um, yeah, that works fine. Legally, legally, can that work? Yes, totally. I recommend not get, getting away from fly out probably is my recommendation on things. I don't know. That's me. The answer, are there other, what other questions? Are there any other questions? Let's see. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I think I might've crushed everything. Oh, someone was asked about QR codes. Great question. Um, you know, John Dick has a, he did the zebra crossing mobile. He has a, he has another repo. I don't know if he's published it yet, but he did have, oh, here we go. He called it big Island barcoding. Give this a look. This is zebracrossing.net.maui. He updated it not too long ago. So give that a peek. I don't think he's published in NuGet yet, but I'm gonna bug him for it, which is pretty cool. Yeah, give that a peek. 
pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah. I think he has, let's see. Yeah, he's a whole controls thing, a bunch of stuff. That's cool. I don't know if it's all the if all the stuff is supported yet, but ideally this is would would be what you use, yeah. There's a flex layout, Luca. Yeah, there's a flex layout that you can use. So if you go into the uh, documentation, uh, fundamentals, nope, user interface. I can't find anything ever. <laughs> Controls, layouts, flex layout. Here we go. The good old flex layout. I did a whole video on it a long time ago. It's pretty much the same, but yep, that, that's basically what you'd want to use. Yeah. Is AOT compilation ready for Windows apps using MAUI with WinUI 3 and the Windows app SDK? Yes. Why? If, if the Windows app SDK supports it, then yes. If it doesn't, then no. <laughs> it's out of subject. Un Undertaken asks, why do I like monkeys? Well, one, monkeys are awesome. They're one of my favorite animals in the entire world. So they're super awesome uh, in general. Just in general, monkeys are pretty much awesome. And, uh, you know, Xamarin's history itself comes from like a, a lineage of monkey-based themes. So... Um, Xamarin, you know, came from a company that Miguel and and Nat had created, like Zimian, which is all about like mono, which is Spanish, um, uh, Latin for one, Spanish for monkey, right? In, in general, like so, mono, the open source .net original open source .net uh, had a monkey theme to it, right? And Zimian was like a like a a simian, right? In this monkey theme. Uh, Darkum, thank you for following. Appreciate that. Following, I don't know what following even means. Subscribing? I don't know if that means the same thing, but thank you, whatever that is. Um, so, uh, when Xamarin came about, there was lineage of how to marry like that, that mono monkey brand Zimian together. And what they did is they came up with, with Zimian to keep that X. It was an X instead of Simian, it was Zimian and the golden tamarin. So tamarin, zimian, xamarin. So the mascot pretty much was really uh, the golden tamarin monkey, which was really cool, um, which is awesome. So yeah, that's kind of like the history there. But I, I love monkeys, I think they're so cool. So bum, 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 bum. there you go, that's the history. Leonardo, Leonardo, Leonardo asks, you could ask it, uh, you could implement JS as well. Yeah, if it's available, you could use like a Blazor control. Can you have modals? Uh, yep. You can have multiple windows too in it. GA generally available. It's GA generally available. It has been for over a month, but I haven't been around for like over a month. So I had this scheduled um, for like a few weeks ago, but there. How do you get your battery manufacturer? I don't know. I don't think it's available. Uh, if it if it is on Android, you could look at the Android stuff. But you can get the battery information. I mean, I highly doubt that that they're really putting that information inside of these SDKs at all. Uh, so I'm ask, oh, if you're running on Android 6.0, no, it's definitely not supported. No. Um, supported platforms are Android. Um, here are the supported platforms. Um, so and so .NET MAUI itself supports Android 5 and above, API 21. .NET MAUI Blazor apps support Android 7.0, 24, API 24 or higher, which is like literally almost everything. So there's different requirements because there's different web view requirements between the, the different platforms. Uh, Jose asks, can I ask, can I talk a bit about React Native for Windows and Mac OS? Uh, I don't know, I've never used them, so. 
I'm not a React Native person, but so I, um, but they exist. So if you're a React Native developer and you want to target Windows and Mac, that you can do that. Monetization, my in-app billing plugin, Tanaka works there. Um, the other ones maybe just need to be bound and updated. I'm not sure, possibly. Oh, you managed to push, but not an actual modal window, Xenon asks. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'd have to look at the windowing API to say, oh, is this a new modal window in general? Good question. They should, the Kalparaj Kal was asking like, are the bindings going to be available? They should be. I was looking at them. And if not, the team is working on upgrading them there. Uh, it's version 17.3. You can install it today. It's a preview. Just install it, Luca. Just install it side by side. There's no reason not to. Else, I think it the, the stable releases in uh, August from what I think Maddie said it built. Because it releases every three months. So June, July, August there. And we have a big event coming up. The Donet, Ma Donet Comp focus on a Maui event on August 9th, 45 days away. Give that a peek. I believe I will be there hosting it. No, my gosh. Okay, I'm going to go. I got to go to some meetings. Uh, I'm going to let's push this. <laughs> let's push this. I'm going to push this code up. This is going to be fun. I'm going to push the code up uh, as well. So if you just because we had fun with a bunch of stuff today, let's uh, add this to Git, and let's uh, let's push it up. We're going to what are we going to call this? We're going to call this uh, fun fun with Maui .net Maui GA fun with .net Maui stream. <laughs> sure. I'll make this public and create and push. Boom. I want to know your pin on windows 11. Um, Leandro, I use windows 11 on my main work machine on this machine. I have an older processor, so I can't upgrade it, but I really, really like windows 11. And especially the Windows subsystem for Android, Phew, so amazing. Basically, I just never want to use Android emulators ever again because I just love that integration. It's super duper nice. Yeah. I'm really liking these stream beats. Let me double check the GitHub's over here. See if I got the stuffs. Uh, it's only USA today, but it's actually rolling out to more countries, Danny. Yeah. There you go. Boom. Yeah, the subsystem's so good. I really, really like it. But in general, I really like the UI a lot. Everything works really good. I don't know. All right. We answered so many questions. I appreciate everyone hanging out with me today and being super rad. I do this what's this one yeah that's not what i wanted hmm. cool i appreciate everyone being here i thank everyone for hanging out answering asking so many great questions and hanging out fun to build some cool stuff together talk through the blazer hybrid stuff like that i think it's super fun hope you like the stuff that i'm doing over here on the channel uh, i'm having fun i have some new videos hopefully coming out next week if i have some time to edit them uh, which I think I do, uh, and I'll put them out uh, as well. And then we're hoping to do new stuff every week. Um, be spotty for the next few weeks. Got some stuff going on. Uh, but in general, um, you can subscribe. Stay up to date. I appreciate all the subscribers, all the members as well. Waiko, thank you for being a member as well. Aiden as well. Everyone in the chat will do a member exclusive um, stream in July as well. So probably mid-July. Um, but yeah, I'm glad everyone enjoyed the videos, workshops, code, stuff like that. I've been enjoying doing this in my spare time as well. But I hope everyone has a great weekend and great start to the summer. It's beautiful. Just absolutely delightful. I hope you get outside. Enjoy it. Stay safe out there. Talk to you all soon. It's amazing, so amazing.